Our next story from CNET.com, brazen bald eagle attack sends government drone to watery grave. Since the dawn of drones, a quiet war has been raging and drones are losing. The Michigan bald eagle didn't take kindly to the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, E-G-L-E. Yeah, yeah. Eagle, appropriately, operating a drone in its territory last month. You're going to rip off our name? Okay, no, I'm not going <laughs> to. Oh, I won't pretend to do the eagle voice. I'll spare you that terrible dad joke. But, yeah, you can't just help but appreciate the irony of this, that the Michigan Department of its, its Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy, Eagle, Yeah, they, they did that intentionally. According to a Thursday statement from Eagle, not the real Eagle, the, the, the government Eagle, drone pilot Hunter King, an environmental quality analyst, was flying the $950 Phantom 4 Pro advanced drone to investigate shoreline erosion along Lake Michigan on July 21st. He had called the drone back after a short flight when the Eagle launched an airborne attack. King witnessed the aftermath when he saw the eagle flying away and the drone missing, it was like a really bad roller coaster ride. King said of what he saw on the drone tracking video screen, a pair of bird watchers nearby confirmed the eagle's drone kill. Yeah. <laughs> Despite extensive searches, the drone was not recovered. Flight data showed it took a nosedive 150 feet offshore into the chilly waters of Lake Michigan. So much symbolism, so much to read into this. Now I have to point out as gleeful as I am about government getting its comeuppance from nature itself. It's like, yeah, because as a libertarian and I, I, yeah, you gotta insert that into every story, right? Uh, it, uh, it's like, how do you know when a pilot or a vegan or a libertarian walk into a bar? Oh, don't worry, they'll tell you. Uh, but when it comes to this, it's like, yeah, I, 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 as a libertarian, uh, I, my my philosophy, my worldview is based on just recognition of reality, that it's, it's a reality that you as an individual human being, you own yourself. You are responsible for yourself. You have rights incumbent with self-ownership. No one else can violate those rights or use violence against you or, or force fraud or coercion in any way to deprive you of your self-ownership because it is in some way to claim you or your property is theirs illegitimately. And it, it, it's just sort of that recognition of reality and that when you introduce force and coercion into society, you have unintended consequences. You are, contradict, you, you are trying to fight nature, right, rather than flow with it. And that's why when I see a story like this, there's a certain amount of gleefulness and just, oh, yeah, sorry, government, even nature goes, <laughs> get out of my air. And I, no, I, I just have to, I have to step back and, you know, clarify also the libertarian position on this from an environmentalist perspective, because I'm an environmentalist. I'm not I'm not just a libertarian. I'm also an environmentalist. And uh, these things go hand in hand, right? Like, I'm not just a, a libertarian. I believe in freedom. Uh, because as, as a libertarian, we want to maximize the value of everything. And that includes natural resources. That means preserving. That means studying. That means being a good steward. And, and I like the fact that government, in order to maintain its overall racket, has to do this at least token, we're stewards of the environment kind of stuff. Because, you know, the biggest polluter in the world as a single institution today is the United States military you know, and who, who owns land and, and trashes it more than any other institution in, in the world, the US federal government. So as a libertarian and as an environmentalist, I, yeah, we gotta get the government out of this equation. And it's not, you know, hey, we have to privatize everything, like, you know, literally give it over to corporations because that's really not what privatization means when a libertarian uses that term anyway. But I want to see resources managed by people who have a stake in them. And I think localization of control is such an, an, an important way that we get to this better state of harmony with the environment and more conscientious preservation. So it's not that you know resources like 
Lake Michigan need to be in the hands of one corporate entity, but that there should be an ownership stake of those who live in that area who have an actual stake in that body of water and not people in Washington who are beholden to their corporate sponsors. Obviously, localizing control doesn't have to go straight to privatization, but just localizing it is a kind of privatization in, in terms of it's now people who have a vested interest in that resource managing it as opposed to, again, politicians in a far off capital. So to the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, like, yeah, it's I'm not I'm not against environmental monitoring and things like this. You know, but when it's done by government, one, you can't trust it. And two, you know, it's going to be another situation where the cure is worse than the disease. And it's it, the government always makes things worse. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little I'm a little gleeful that that uh, Michigan Department of Eagle <laughs> got their little comeuppance over the waters.